This man thought nothing of the pain in his head until an ad on the radio made him call for help. For many people, a single sharp head pain would be something noticed but ultimately ignored. No medical consultation, no trip to the emergency room, no panic over what might have caused that feeling. And Irishman John Hassett reacted in much the same way to his own headache until a voice told him that it could be something more serious. The voice wasn't coming from his own head or from a concerned loved one, though. It was coming from his radio. Hassett, age 63, wasn't always averse to seeking medical attention for something that appeared minor. In fact, a family tragedy had once made him obsessed with seeking a doctor's opinion for every little pain he felt. Hassett subsequently told The Independent. My wife died from cervical cancer, age 35, and I was left with our two young kids, then aged just six and eight years old, he explained. They were so young and I was petrified of every little pain I'd get and used to persecute the doctors, running to them convinced I had cancer. Eventually he was able to get over his fears that he too would be unexpectedly struck by fatal illness. It was all in my head, he said. Slowly over time I convinced myself there was nothing to worry about. On top of that, Hassett had made an effort to lead a healthy, active lifestyle, with the occasional indulgence, of course. I was always out during the day, climbing mountains and cycling, and I tried to eat healthy, he continued. Nevertheless, he'd often end his days with a glass of whiskey or wine and a cigar. It could have been these habits, plus a tendency to have difficulty sleeping, that led Hassett to very occasionally experience severe head pains. He suffered them twice, in fact first in 2013 and then again in 2017 when he also heard a radio warning that made him realize that his symptoms were serious. On the first occasion, Hassett was partaking in one of his favorite activities. I'd been out cycling, got a puncture and had to carry the bike back to the car, he recalled. Suddenly there was this surge of pressure in my head. Not exactly painful, but it was an awful sensation. Then it was gone. It was the only one and I soon forgot about it. The second time was different, though. Hassett had hopped out of the pool after going swimming and felt a brief, sharp pain in his head, he said. It's hard to describe, but it felt like a surge that was there for a split second, leaving me feeling faint and then gone. At that point, however, he wasn't paying too much attention to his symptoms, but as he drove home from the swimming pool, he felt a second wave of the strange pain, and then he heard it, a radio ad for a round-the-clock cardiac health center. Its content was eerily familiar to Hassett. There was something about the symptoms they were describing that made me think, that's me, he said. I rang the number when I got home and when I told them my symptoms, the woman on the other end said to come in. Hassett had his daughter drive him to the appointment, at which point he knew that his health was in crisis. The surges of pain kept happening. The traffic was heavier than usual, he recalled. I just kept talking to myself saying, you're nearly there, John, you're on your way to the right place. At this point in the story, Hassett's memories become blurry, probably a side effect of his deteriorating health. He did remember a nurse who cheerfully chatted with him until she checked his vitals. Suddenly she went very quiet and looked a bit red in the face, he said. I knew then I was in trouble. Cardiologists then came to examine Hassett and finally diagnosed his condition. He had a heartbeat so out of the ordinary that he was considered to be in pre-death state, hanging on to life with minutes to spare. He needed surgery to save his life. A doctor subsequently told him that his chance of dying during surgery was about 20%. That left Hassett to mull over all his regrets, including the secondary symptoms that he hadn't heeded. He admitted to ignoring heart palpitations and an erratic pulse, the latter of which had been detected by the heart rate monitor on his exercise bike. Hassett dismissed the readings, however, believing that the device's batteries needed replacing. I disregarded the signs of heart disease and I don't know why, he admitted. I can only say that I was foolish. Getting the news that this might be it for me, there's no other words than to say it was heart-stopping and I couldn't help but cry. Thankfully, the surgery was successful. The section of my heart that was out of control was removed. No discomfort or pain, Hassett explained. It just felt like a bit of thread going round and round the bottom of my heart. And he credited the radio commercial for his now clean bill of health. I feel the radio ad saved my life because it jolted me into action, he said. He later found out that the timing of the ad and the moment he decided to call the center were serendipitous. 
It's only if you phone the cardiac call line before noon that you get to be seen that day, he said. Any later appointments are usually the next day. If I'd left it even another half hour, I might have missed it. Now Hassett's learning how to live with his new normal. I could so easily have not been here, and I'm so grateful to everyone who helped me, he said, but it can sometimes feel like there's pressure to make the most of this given time. For Hassett, that's meant playing it safe, which has led to solitude and time to think about and mourn the deaths of other family members, including his wife and, later, his son. But he also has moments that take his breath away for all the right reasons. I'll ride the bike somewhere up Houth Head, gaze out to the sea and think, aren't I lucky? And it's very clear that he is. Please share this video with your friends below.